Everybody, this is my boy Slim. Slim, we met in VR chat, didn't we? Well, I, I didn't know if you wanted to tell them about Grinder or not. So. Okay, we shouldn't tell them about that at all. Okay. We should. I'll, I'll, yeah. I won't be putting that. <laughs> Slim, you're you also have a deep voice like me. Do you feel like life gives you an advantage because of it? I mean, yes and no. Uh, a lot of times when I get passionate about something, my voice tends to get higher. Obviously, like most people, but. Wait, really? I feel like I haven't heard you, like, in your high voice mode. I mean, I wouldn't say it's super high, but it definitely, like, it, there's a little bit of a range, you know? Okay, it's not like, it's not like squeaky, like Mickey Mouse. No, no. Oh, no. okay. You mentioned fitness, and specifically, like, trends and, like, fads that you said, like, potentially, like, hinder people's, like, goals that they have with fitness. What, what were you kind of talking about that, like, as far as fitness goes, like? So this is like one of my one of my trigger points when people talk about like they can't lose weight or they're trying to do like a keto diet or you know cut out all sweets in their life or something crazy like it's it's as simple for losing weight it's as simple as going I'm going to eat less like that's I mean that's all there is to it and I think people try to make it super hard so that way well, some people use it as like an excuse like they're like oh I have to exercise and and diet and I can't eat this I can't eat that and it's like that's just simply not the case and some people are just, they try too hard and then they have like, they give in. I mean, they can sustain it for about two weeks and then they just give up. And it's like, well, what was the point? Like, and then they gain even more weight than they had in the first place. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I feel like um, things, things are very much over complexified and like blown out of proportion. And like, I mean, I think, I think we've, I don't know what your background is, but like, I've, someone who's worked out my whole life I've done sports and so like I can't imagine what it's like to perceive working out and then like trying to like literally take first steps into it like I can see how it'd be a little um confusing for someone just starting out yeah and especially well what really puts things into perspective is like when I started actually getting serious about working out and given I'm I'm a tall skinny guy like I there's not a single like straight pound of fat on my body basically so people might <laughs> take what i just yeah, said yeah kind of the wrong way but i mean i went back and i was like look i'm i swear to god i'm stuffing myself like i'm eating you know ten thousand calories a day why am i why am i not getting any weight well i started tracking it it added everything up it was like maybe two thousand calories i was like well that's nuts so obviously i had to change that and it made me realize like people who are my stature trying to gain weight are probably not eating enough and people who are you know, bigger trying to lose weight are probably eating much more than they think they are or eating a lot more of the wrong things. And therefore, like, they end up eating more calories and can't lose the weight. So. so this is interesting for me because, like, I feel like for me, diet is really hard, whereas the actual working out part I enjoy. Um, for some people, it might be flip-flopped. But it's interesting, like, if you were – do you feel like you would suggest – focusing on someone's diet like if someone was just starting out is that what you would focus on to start instead of like any workout regimens or anything like that like you you just say like just eat less well yeah i mean yeah because realistically even if you didn't work out whatsoever maybe you just like walked around at work and that was your your whole workout routine if, if you're eating too much then regardless of how much you work out you, you can't do anything so my recommendation would be to definitely just diet not even diet don't call it a diet but just watch what you not even watch what you eat actually just eat less honestly like fill one plate up maybe you get like a smaller plate and proportion it out but yeah just eat less eat less of stuff yeah no i feel it yeah um so do you have any thoughts on uh this is kind of interesting because like there's the whole um uh, there's the body positivity movement um, which I think is cool because I think it's like, yes, you should, you know, embrace who you are and all that. Mm -hmm. But I, I, where I start to get a little concerned is where people just start saying like, no matter what, like, no matter where you are, you're always healthy, basically, is what some people have told me. And I just, I, I have mixed feelings about that. Yeah, I'm no shame in saying this, but there is a certain point where you, you can't be proud of yourself. I mean, when you have to have help getting into, I mean, getting out of a chair, like that's, 
at, at some point I think that would be embarrassing, you know, and you got to look at yourself and be like, what am I, what good is this doing me? And like, where, look at how, look at what my body's become, you know, I think people should be proud of it, but they should always be trying to like better themselves because I've seen, I, I mean, you see all the reality TV shows. It's like my 600 pound life. Like, why would you, why would you stay there? I mean, shouldn't you, we had shows like the biggest loser because we wanted to encourage people to lose that weight. We weren't trying to say you're not good enough, but we were trying to give them encouragement to be better, you know, and keep them from getting diabetes and die early or some sort of weird medical condition that results from being overweight. Oh yeah, no, hundred percent. And I feel like that's, that's always a tough thing for me. Like specifically like with my overweight friends, like I just want them to know, I'm always coming from a place of encouragement. Like I'm, I'm, I'm never down for like shaming someone for where they're at. Like it's like, I'm right, all, but, right. but, but at the same time, like they should take my encouragement as like, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, look out for like what's best for them. Like I, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's a, that's, I don't know if it's subjective, but I just feel like if you're in shape rather than out of shape, you're going to have a better time overall. Like exactly. And like it, it, it can affect a lot of things like mentally. I mean, physically you'd probably just feel better, but even like, I know even when I was in the gym and I, I mean, I was scrawny, I was a scrawny kid growing up, like underweight. Like I would, people called me a twig pretty much every day, which was, I mean, it was understandable. I looked at myself. I was like, yeah, they're right. I mean, I'm trying to put on weight, but I was still going. But regardless of where, you're, especially when people are in the gym, I think they, overthink things and like, oh, everybody's going to look at me. Everybody's going to think I'm, I'm struggling or overweight or they're going to laugh at me. It's, like, it's just not the case because people are in there. Like when I see someone who's overweight, who comes to the gym, I'm like, you know what? They're taking a first step. Like that's, that's a big thing to come into the gym when you know you're not where you want to be or you're not proud of your body. That's a huge thing because I came into the gym and I couldn't even bench press the bar. So <laughs> I understand I, yeah. what it's like to feel yeah, shameful yeah, yeah. walking into a gym, even though it doesn't look like it, you know? Hell yeah. And then I actually, I ended up figuring out that some of like, you know, the more jockier dudes in the gym were actually some of the nicer guys I've met. Like, mm -hmm. sure, you could call them meatheads and stuff. And it's like, yeah, they spend most of their life in the gym. But as far as like, I mean, if you think about it, like where, where in other area can you be like, hey, can you help me with this? Or like, hey, can you offer me advice? Like, I swear to God every guy in the gym will give you advice. Like maybe sometimes it's unsolicited, but at the same time, it's like, they're genuinely like, yeah, man, like if you want to do this, like work on your form there. It's like, Oh, if you want to get a really good back workout, like I'll suggest this, like honestly, like pretty helpful stuff. Like I don't <laughs> like that's been my experience. At least I never met any like trolls that were kind of shagging me down. Yeah, me either. And the funny thing is like we had a guy or we have a guy at our local gym that I go to. Um, and he was, 400 pounds at one point, but now he, he's, you know, the super buff, you know, the stereotypical meathead looking guy. And I mean, he's just, he made friends with my little sister because they do like a boot camp class. And uh, he was like, yeah, if anybody ever threatens you, like, you know, just come tell me, I'll take care of him. I thought it was the funniest thing. <laughs> you don't expect someone who's, you know, maybe six foot three, you know, 220 pounds of just pure muscle to be a, a teddy bear, basically. And he was even shy when they first met him. Like, he, he wouldn't talk as much because. And just the type of person he is. I think people forget that everybody starts in the gym somewhere different. Some people are already built. Some people are underbuilt. Some people are trying to lose weight. I mean, everybody's got different goals and stuff too. So, yeah, I mean, this is like a personal thing for me. But like when I started shaving my head because I was like, I just don't have enough hair. I I, mm -hmm. I look at other people as far as bodies are concerned, and I'm like, you can change that. Like, I can't change what I have. But people who are overweight, out of shape, like you literally, you can change that. Like, it's like, it's totally within your realm to change. And it's like, I'm envious of that. Like people out there, they have a choice. Like I have no choice. I'm Mr. Clean, but it's like, you know, if it's, if you're just talking about your body type and like being in shape or not being in shape, like you have total control of that. It's not, it's never without, it's never like out of your control, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, 
So you mentioned also <laughs> communication, like specifically communicating with strangers yeah. and people who are afraid to like openly talk. Um, what did you, what were you thinking about with that? I mean, there's a lot of places I could go, but what, what really brought it up was when I was listening to your interview with Asha the other day, um, you brought up your chat and like how you guys met. And so I was thinking like, your chat's a funny place or virtual reality is a funny place because you, you can't see people. You can't judge them based on anything but what they say and what they do in game or I mean, that's pretty much it unless you somehow meet them outside. Yeah, yeah, course. that's right. Like us, I mean, like how we talk outside of the game. But it's just funny because whether for good, for better, for worse, you know, people are uncensored there and you'll get in, in it's insane because people, random people, like you've never said a word to, will just come up and, you know, sometimes spill their life stories. And it's not always the most enjoyable thing, but it's much more interesting than meeting people in real life, having a two word conversation. And maybe you actually want to get to know the person, but you, you just don't, you can't. And it's a weird thing. It, it is weird. And I, I think kind of like what DJ was saying, like, cause he's, he's met people that he's met in VR chat before in real life. And like, I mean, he, he didn't say there's anything like drastically different, but I definitely think there's an element of you can put on a persona or you can be yourself. I, I never wanted to treat it as like an escape. Like I was just like, yeah. this is a medium where I can literally, you know, it's a social game and I used to not be into social games and now I am. And I think it's, I think it's really cool. Um, but there is that aspect of you can either be who you actually are or be someone else. Um, but it's a hundred percent based on your personality and communication. Like that's, that's the whole thing almost. I mean, just the openness, like, cause I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm a fairly open person. Like if somebody asked me something and also it's something I am super uncomfortable talking about, then I would, I pretty much answer immediately, honestly, with n no ill intent on of course, but I don't know. It's it's definitely just it's weird how closed off people can be in real life these days. Oh, for sure. That's that's like a major issue with with the world right now. Literally, <laughs> like I don't. And I'm not saying I have answers to it, but. I well, does it sound boomer of me to say that, but I mean it's true. Like I I feel like a lot of people there, there's a lot of times in my first few conversations with someone in my mind I'm thinking, have you ever had a conversation before? Like, do you even know how to talk? And a lot of the time the answer is no. Like, and I'm not trying to sound condescending, like, but I just feel like. The, you, you're never taught a class on communication skills when you're growing up. Like most people don't even like consider what it's like to, just to have a conversation. Like no one takes those few seconds to even think about that. Like, I feel like a lot of people are just kind of floating on by like just existing. Yeah. I think we both know somebody who uh, is kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> we, we really <laughs> well type of, um, yeah. Yeah. Kind of those. But, <laughs> I don't know, there, there, I've, there's a lot of things about communication that bugs me. Like when people, I know people, I've had a lot of complaints about this because I double text people and I'll triple text like nothing. I, I don't care. I don't care if people get mad at me or whatever because at the end of the day, I'm just trying to show that I care. You know, I want to talk to you. I'm trying to be there. Maybe I've got a question that needs answering. Maybe I need help with something. Maybe I just want to say hi. I maybe just want to wish you a good day. And I think that can be misinterpreted by people these days because we well, always, I mean, especially girls. Oh God, I can't imagine what it's like to be a girl in this day and age because their DMs are always blowing up. I mean, it doesn't matter what type of girl you are, where you're from, anything. I mean, being a girl is hard and I can respect that. But when you, when you try to have a conversation with somebody and it just feels like they're shutting you down because they, they think, um, like any other dude who might just be thirsty or something else or is like going to be boring. It's, it's annoying. And it's, it's kind of hard because I, I can be a sensitive person when it comes to things like that, because I've been shut down a lot by people that I cared about just because I wanted to talk to them more. 
So it's, it's frustrating in that aspect. Yeah. And I mean, like I almost, I mean, I, I, I super wish I could go back in time and like put the brain I have now into like my 18 year old self. Like I was a, I mean, you kind of know me now I'm a little bit of a spaz, but if you can imagine it used to be worse and like, Ooh. yeah, it was not fun for anyone probably. But like, I just feel like if everyone just stopped like searching for the next booty call or just like, just is like, if everyone just paused for a second and was like, what if instead I just went around friending everyone? Like mm -hmm. there's, there's no sexual undertones. It's like, I'm literally, it doesn't matter if you're a boy, girl, a teddy bear. It's like, w w let's just be friends. Like, and um, it's like, I just feel like that opens the door to so many more things. And then I don't know. I mean, and, and it'll be a hell of an easier time for girls, especially like you were saying this day and age, it's hard to be a girl. Like I a hundred percent agree. Like I, I can't imagine what it's like to be like an 18 year old chick right now going through like high school and stuff. Like I, I, I despise my own sex for it. Like I'm sure there's a bunch of moron dudes ruining it for us. <laughs> yeah. Especially cause it's like the opposite for guys. It's, impossible to get a response and for girls you just get too many so it's it's hard to understand too i think for a lot of people or a lot of guys at least that girls are probably overwhelmed 99 percent of the time by us yeah i mean the thing is like i'm i'm still um i'm not necessarily afraid of rejection per se but i'm mm -hmm. just afraid of being perceived as a guy who's like just looking for like a one night stand or something like i that's my fear is like, if I'm going to talk to a girl I may be interested in, I don't want to her, her to assume like these negative things. Like, I just want her to think I'm, I'm just reaching out to her as a person. Like that's, that's where like my struggle comes with. Yeah. I'd say it's the same thing for me because I mean, I guess most guys out there are kind of like that. Not to say every, every guy's, you know, bad and just wants to get in your pants, but it, it's, what am I trying to say? It's a, uh, it's preconceived because it's true. I mean, there's no denying that a lot of guys out there are just trying to hit a girl up and get something one way or another. Um, yeah, slide, in, slide into those DMs. Yeah. Well, what do you think about, like, um, like, I don't take it offensive if someone is straight up with me and is like, I don't, I don't like you. Or it's like, I feel like maybe sometimes people are afraid that it's like, if we're not compatible, there's something wrong with us. But it's like, that's a good thing. Like you, I don't think you should be compatible with everyone. Like that, that to me would be a bad sign if you were getting on with everyone, like in, in a more like re relationship romantic aspect. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that could mean like, maybe you're denying a part of yourself to like, you know, compensate and like blend with the other person more. <laughs> I guess I liked for a second. Yeah, I'd ha I mean, I'd have to agree with that. It's just, obviously, you can't, I mean, you can't date everybody. You can't find that certain one person oh, by dating all, all <laughs> damn it. you know, like, whatever, five billion girls there are in the world. <laughs> There's got, got to be one, one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully. It's got to be one. They always say that, but you never know. Yeah, there could be three. <laughs> <laughs> could be hundreds. There could be three out of a billion. <laughs> But yeah, I get what you're saying because I mean, I got, I've been in some not great relationships where you immediately find out you're not, you're not good with that person. And then I've been, I was in a relationship for three and a half years where I thought that was the person. Like, and we had a lot of differences, of course, but in the end, I mean, there's stuff that happened and obviously just didn't work out. And that's understandable because you can't just expect to find that one person. God, I was 17 at the time. You can't just expect to find that person soon and, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know oh, yeah. No, that. I mean, um, that's something I had to find out too was like, um, I found a lot of it in my relationships. I was either I was putting on an act or I was kind of acting as a crutch for the other like girl I was with. Like they would yeah. usually have some kind of self-esteem issues and like me being my positive self, like. I would, you know, encourage them a lot because it's like I care about them. But then I started to realize, like, if I ever stopped doing that, 
like if I was if, if I was ever stop a hundred if I was ever like stopping being a hundred percent positive, they would think that something was wrong. And so I was like, I'm not, I can't be an editor, and, and I can't be like an energy drink for this relationship. Like, yeah, I you you have to be your own person. Like, and that's why independence is super important. That is so why basically, I I stole the, I stole those words from Will Smith, and in his, I think he said them on Instagram, but basically. Him and his wife met each other and then broke up because they weren't happy with themselves. Not because they weren't happy with their relationship, but because they couldn't find happiness, happiness on their own. And then later they got back together and got married. And I mean, I guess they figured out their own happiness and everything else. But that really, that really hit home because I wasn't happy in my relationship, but I also wasn't already happy with myself. So, I mean, when you are unhappy with yourself, it's already hard enough to find a happiness in a relationship. And when you're in that relationship isn't even going well, it's really hard to stick with it and suffer through it, which I did for a long time. And now that I look back at it, I mean, I should have left a long time ago just because it was clearly not going to work out. But obviously when you're in the moment and you want to be with this person and you and do love them, you know, it's really hard to, mm -hmm. to say that. Oh yeah. For sure. Yeah. When the feelings are super strong. No, that's, that's totally true. I think, I think it's even more important because the cool thing is, is when you're by yourself and you're comfortable and you're happy and you're just, your thought process is like, I'm literally, I'm fine. Like whether or not I find someone, I'm fine. The cool thing is if you do find a person and you're like, oh my God, they actually make my life better. Then it's like bada boom, bada bing. There you go. Versus I'm a sad, sad, you know, depressed guy by myself oh, let me find this person and then that will bring me happiness. It's like filling the yes. void versus like, I, here, here's my partner in crime, right? Here's two individuals got their own stuff going on. Like, and that's, you know, that's more exciting, right? That, that's, that's how it should be, I guess. Yeah, for sure. And I think the sad thing is that like a lot of people think relationships are going to define them, but in reality, it should just be like a topping, like an icing on the cake, you know? It shouldn't be oh, I'm dating this person, therefore my life should be perfect or something silly like that. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, And I want it to be the case too where like, if I'm in a relationship or if I'm married, like, we still have our own friends. And it's like, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's what it should be. Like when you're together with the person, it should be bringing more people together because it's like you're combining your friend groups. You may not have to get along, but it's like, I want my part. I want my partner to have their own things going on and their own friends. Like, cause if I trust them, it doesn't matter who they're with, like in their free time. Like, I think, I think that's a more like appropriate, like approach, I guess. And it's, I mean, it's definitely an adult thing because I'm obviously back when I was younger, you know, everybody has like their first or second girlfriend and they're all like, Oh my God, don't talk to him. Don't talk to him. Cause he's hotter than me. Or, don't talk to him because he, He's better at me than soccer. Don't talk yeah, to him yeah, because yeah. I just don't like him. Like, yeah. you know, everybody kind of goes through that phase. And I think the more you, you grow up and you realize like, Oh my God, I'm out of high school. I don't, I don't hang out with the same people. And this girl doesn't even, I mean, this girl's from a different state. Like she doesn't even know anybody that I've known my whole life. You know, And it's, it's just entirely different from at least adult relationships. Adult relationships are entirely different from what people kind of grow up with and the things that kids or even people my age nowadays have experience with. Oh yeah. No, I don't think, um, I, it makes me so sad. Like I wish, I guess that's like the problem. Like I'm sure there's a bunch of like, elder people out there who are like, oh, I wish I could share my wisdom with these kids. Like, but I really do. Like, I really felt like I made some stupid mistakes and I, I want, that's like what drives me to create stuff is like, I want to help other people. Like, I don't want people banging their head against the wall like I did. Like, and that's, I mean, it's probably like, that's how you find your passion is like, for, at least for me, it's from some of my bigger mistakes. Yeah, that's where that communication stuff comes in too. Because when people don't open up to you or don't ask questions like, hey, I know you went through a relationship. What did you do when this, this, this happened? Or, hey, I'm struggling right now. Could you help me out with college or relationships? Because, I mean, I've, I've been there and I've failed it. Like, I failed a relationship. I failed college. I, I struggled in high school. I 
made bad decisions. And when people can't come and talk to you about that, especially when they're and when they don't even feel like they can talk to their family about things like that and open up, it's real. It's it's tough to see because I was like that too, and I didn't open up, and I regret it. So now every chance I get, when somebody brings up something that they have an issue with, even if they're my friend or somebody random, like I give my input because I know that. Well, I hope that it will help them. I hope it'll save them some trouble because I know it has caused me a lot of trouble. So if I can help somebody else, you know, better themselves and better their life from just you know ten or fifteen little words, then one hundred percent I would do it. So you you mentioned misconceptions, like what misconceptions about animals? I mean, mostly snakes. Like for me, because I, I own two snakes, I have a corn snake and a spotted python, and uh, I'm sure a lot of people already like pooping out a brick right now because they heard the word python but they're i mean realistically they're they're intelligent creatures i mean they have brains they can think they can interact i mean both my snakes especially my, my python she i've only had her for two years now but um especially when i first got her she would strike a lot and be nervous and i mean you can tell like they move around frantically like like a dog would around a person they don't know um, but obviously the more I held her, the more we interacted with each other, the safer it got and the happier it seemed like she would become, or at least the more tolerant she was with me handling her. So, right. Right. How did you get her? Um, I actually bought her from a reptile show that I went to with my friend back when I was in college, my sophomore year in college. A reptile show? What the heck? What? Yeah. Basically a bunch of people. So a lot of, a lot of vendors, I guess you'd call them what like, people who breed reptiles or purchase them from other people like outside the country and like import them basically show up at this reptile show. And I mean, there's all sorts of people and animals that show up. Like you get reptiles, amphibians, spiders, scorpions. I mean, sometimes <laughs> there was a monkey at the one that I went to and got her at actually. And like a baby kangaroo and some other crazy stuff. Oh, what the heck? I want a baby kangaroo. What's the deal? Like, is it just to show or is it like these animals can also be like adopted, I guess? Like, yeah. Most, I mean, most of them are for sale basically. I mean, it's like purchasing a dog, I guess. Same, same thing. Is this something I could look up? Like, is this a specific like company that does this or is this like a one-off thing? La, so there's certain like yearly events. Like in Texas, we have like Repticon and uh, oh, there's like a couple other ones that I'm forgetting right now. But there's like ones that are held every year and sometimes there's like some smaller ones held in between just by people who want to do it. So That's super cool. No, I had, <laughs> I had never crossed my mind before. How big is your python? My python right now, she's only going to get up to like three and a half to four feet max, but she's at about two and a half feet right now is she comfortable with other people like how does she interact with others if you ever let her around other people i guess with everybody else it's i mean it's the same thing um like if you were to socialize a dog with a bunch of different people it would be fairly uh comfortable i guess around people so i would say she i mean she's pretty normal around me and anyone else who wants to hold her but the only thing is that, that like if you like a prey item, basically. Like if you were to move like a mouse, like really fast, and like you know your body shaking or something, she'd pick up. Like, she'd pick up on that. So might... okay. So if I dressed, but she wasn't well. Yeah, thing. yeah. If I dressed up as a rat and came to your house, um, she might, she might try to get me. Well, as long as you don't smell like one. Then you'd be fine. <laughs> um. All right. I. That's yeah. Because snakes have a pretty strong sense of smell. Yeah. So snakes actually have. I'd say sense of smell is generally like their best sense. Um, and people don't know that they actually can't hear. So like if you yell at a snake, they're, they're not going to hear you. Like they can't. That's hilarious. I did not know snakes couldn't hear. I've been yelling at them I, my whole life. I didn't know that for a long time until I was like 12. And I had been like studying snakes basically up until then. But I had no idea. So all they feel is like the vibrations basically. That's so interesting then. Like, so how do you communicate? Like, is there, I'm assuming there's a way for you to communicate with your snake, like your snakes? Um, I don't know if it's communication more or less, but I mean, there's certain things. So like, obviously when I feed them, I have like a tongs and I move the food around in a certain way basically. Um, but 
they can also, I mean, it's mainly just getting them used to, okay, you smell different than food and holding them for extended periods of time or often enough that they get used to. Mm-hmm. Nice. Nice. Um, was there anything else you wanted to talk more about animals? Um, before we switch topics, I, I feel like you also posted a picture of a bunch of different animals you have. How many animals do you own? So, well, I'll just quickly kind of go through all the animals that we've had. Yeah. Uh, so first it started out with a beta fish and then we got two cats. Um, not, I, we don't still have all these, by the way, it's just kind of going to list, but so we got two cats and then we got two hamsters that had babies and we had nine hamsters at one point. And then we had a, a fish tank with, I don't know, probably 10 to 12 fish. And then we got more ham, two more hamsters, I think. And then let's see, we moved, we got a dog. We still have two cats. Um, we had two ferrets. We got another cat, got two more cats. Uh, got another dog. Our first dog passed away, and then we got another dog. Uh, Damn. So throw some throw some numbers at me. Like, how many total? Well, how many are alive with you right now? Okay, so right now I have one lizard, <laughs> two snakes, three cats, and a dog. Well, my family, I guess. I own the reptiles, but... One lizard, two snakes, a cat, and a dog? Three cats, one dog. Three cats, one dog. My God, that is a zoo. You just are you trying? Are you trying? Are you trying? Are you treating it like Pokemon? You want to collect them all? What What's the next step for you? Do you is there an animal you want to get to add to your collection? I'm for sure. Like dog wise, it would have to be. I want a white German Shepherd, a black German Shepherd, and a uh, German Shepherd Golden Retriever mix. German, and then German. for reptiles, yeah. it'd have to be like. They're called pygmy monitors, but basically it's like a like a Komodo dragon, but like three feet long. Pygmy pygmy monitors? What are what? It's it's like the not species, like family family of monitors. Oh, I see. But like they're just smaller basically and easier to take care of. So nice. Damn.